Hey guys, we're going to do a small teardown video here today. This is a K2 Energy K2B 12V 19EB battery. This is lithium iron phosphate, 12.8 volts, 19.2 amp hours, and 245 watt hours. I picked this up from Battery Hookup. They had them on sale a couple of weeks ago. It cost me $77 shipped with the discount code battery. And my understanding is these were used in medical cart equipment computers. And any batteries used in hospitals are typically replaced on a fairly routine basis, meaning they have a longer lifespan remaining for those of us who are repurposing them for a second use. So on the front of this battery, you can see it's rated for a continuous discharge of 19.2 amps. And you can read the specifications here. I'm not gonna go every single one. You can put two of these batteries in series for up to 24 volts, and you can parallel an unlimited amount of these batteries. So as a precautionary measure, I did discharge this battery completely last night until the BMS shut off. The BMS turned back on this morning, so we're sitting about 12.4 volts, because obviously the BMS is not gonna take it down to zero. That's the point of the BMS. Now, rather than dig into this thing with a screwdriver like I've done in the past, I finally picked me up a heat gun. Uh, there's nothing uberly special about this one. It was just a cheap model that had good reviews on Amazon. So what I'm going to try to do is heat up the seam where these two pieces of plastic are glued together and see if we can pry off this top without damaging it. I see there is already a little bit of a lip here. Also, one thing I noticed is these, it's hard to see in the video, but these are bulging just a little bit. I'm not sure if that's because there are prismatic cells in here or just the design of the plastic, but if I lay it down flat, you can see how it rocks. So it's, it's difficult to see, but there is a little bit of bowing there. And just the typical safety disclaimer, you should never disassemble these batteries. I don't want to see anybody else trying to do that because they watch this video. Just gather your information from this video rather than trying to do it yourself. It's definitely soft. Let's see. I always hate to shove metal objects in these, but sometimes that's the only way to get them open. Well, the plastic's definitely soft, but it's not really giving away in the way I would have hoped. And apparently there's some pressure built up in there. Right, and there we go. That definitely did not come off as cleanly as I would have hoped. I was hoping I'd be able to put this back together. Yeah, I don't know that I would do it that way again because it kind of started to smell like plastic and I know when PVC uh, burns, it's kind of, it produces toxic vapors, so. And I don't see any wire size on these wires, but they look like they are either 10 gauge, most likely 10 or potentially 12. And it's got a bit of this white silicone holding it in, so I'm going to try to dig that out and uh, see if we can slide this battery out then. Alright, so with some of that uh, silicone loosened up, it is starting to move a little bit. I don't know if we can very carefully... Alright, so there is the battery pack. So I don't see any bulging on the sides. I'm guessing that was due to the pressure because remember when I opened the, the can, there was a little bit of air pressure in there. Um, so let's go ahead and remove this heat shrink and see what we have underneath. Just being very careful. I don't want to puncture anything underneath this heat shrink. Oh, there's some big cells in there. Look at that. I was expecting pouch cells. This is cool. 26 650s. Not bad. All right. And I think it's fairly obvious that a K2 Energy battery is going to have K2 Energy cells in them. These are model number LFP26650EV, 3.2 volts nominal, 10.24 watt hours per cell. So we got 10.24 divided by 3.2. Those are 3,200 milliamp hour cells each. Let me go ahead and remove this adhesive pad on the top here. The foam is protecting the BMS. I don't think that's a thermal. It looks like just some insulative paper, which makes sense underneath the foam. There's no thermal properties to that. So taking a look at our BMS here, the positive and negative are bolted down, which, which is pretty cool. So it's easy to service um, if you can get it out. It was fairly difficult to get it out, but that's besides the point. And those are lock nuts that are put on, which is a great sign of quality. 
we have the FETs for turning the battery on and off during charging and discharging when it reaches an abnormal condition. And I don't know, this, I don't really see any bouncing resistors. I see a couple of, I see several very small resistors here and they are in pairs of four. So I guess those are bouncing resistors, but they must have a very low balancing current. Now I wasn't planning to take this battery pack apart because I wanted to put it back together, but I think I've changed my mind. I want to take everything off that I can here and break these cells apart. And these bolts are seven millimeter sockets. There. It's a lot easier to work with that uh, top piece out of the way. Here's another close-up shot of the BMS. I see the date on the bottom reads December 10th, 2011. So this is a fairly old battery. It's about 10 years. Right, and there are two screws holding down the balance leads for the top two batteries. And then the other connections are all made with thin pieces of wire. So I'm just going to snip those as close to the batteries I can. That way I don't have live leads floating around. And that should be all connections for this BMS. I should be able to peel it off now. Looks like they have it glued down, unfortunately. Here we go. All right, so I see a crease on the left and there's a crease on the right. So the series connections, this is the main positive. It's going down like this and then it's coming back up like this. So I need to separate the two cells here to peel these apart. Move the insulated paper on the top. Oh, there we go, that was easy. I was assuming they'd be glued together, but no. So it's folded apart. And there you can see the spot welding. And that's pretty thick nickel or steel or whatever they used for the welding, considering it's only capable of 20 something amps. So this is a 4S 6P battery pack. That means there are four cells in series and each of the series groupings has six cells. Now what's interesting about this is there is a very faint smell of electrolyte. So I don't know where that is coming from. I guess I will be breaking these down into individual cells, even though I was thinking of leaving them in a pack like this. I don't really see any visible damage. All that residue is just glue. It's not like anything that's leaked. All right, so I've got all these cells separated at this point and they were very easy to break down. This glue stuff on the cardboard, it just picks right off. You know, it's not even really glued. So here's the cell again, like we said earlier, it's a 10.24 watt hour cell. You should be able to just slide it out of the cardboard wrapper. Okay. It's a standard cylindrical cell. There's nothing overly special about it. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I'll likely put these in my hoard of other uh, lithium iron phosphate cells to be used at a later point in time. If there's anything you're interested in purchasing from Battery Hookup, please don't forget to use my discount code of battery. That will give you 5% off pretty much everything in the store. And that will also let them know I referred you, which is how I can fund projects like this. Most of these batteries I tear apart, I pay for with my own money. They're not sponsored or anything like that. Otherwise, if you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button down below. Questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thank you very much for watching.